Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Cincy Junior Summer School Show. If you're new here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're on lesson 9 for both PowerPoint and course lessons. If you don't have the book, you can find it at www.juniorpowerpoint.org. And for the course of books, you can find it at cornerstoneconnections.net. The title for the PowerPoint lesson is an island dream. The power text can be found in Revelation 1 verse 8. And it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, God who is or who was and who to come, the Almighty. The title for the course of lesson is Making Rooms for God. And the key text can be found in Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9. And it says, Then make them make them have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make the turbicle and all of the furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Exodus 25, verse 8 to 9. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the show. Amen. Hi everyone, welcome to the Night Again Yin show. We are on lesson 9 for both the PowerPoint and the Canvas of lesson. My name is Joy. I'm going to be the host for today's discussion. But before we move any further on, introduce the people that I have today. So I have, um, okay, <laughs> we hang out with me today. How are you doing today? Rihanna? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. That's good. I also have a pastor and work with us today as our special guest. How are you doing today, Pastor Emma? Yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well. Okay, good. That's good to know. Thank you for joining us today. So, um, yeah, like I said earlier, for lesson nine of what we call my independent of discussion. But before we go any further, we're going to close the eyes for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, thank you for the amazing things that have been all with us. We put faith in God and into your name, it's like we're going to say again, so let's be successful in prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, the lesson I, for the PowerPoint, the title says, An Island Dream. It was about, um, it was a critical time in the history of the church that John was sent to, um, Bonjourment. Never had this voice been needed by the church as long. Nearly all his former uh, associates in the ministry had suffered. The remnants of the uh, believers were facing difficulties. So, uh, what do you call it? With John, the Lord reached out to him in the darkness and in the fullness of God. John was placed where Christ could give him a wonderful revelation of himself and of the divine truth for an um, attainment for the church. So it journey just like with the Bible, like a certain message for the church. That is the summary for um the PowerPoint. I think we were not able to get the person to give it to us. I give a little summary. So we're gonna go with the discussion for today. So the key says can be found in Revelation 1 verse 8, which say 
I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So what do you think about the Jesus right now? I feel as though um, um, the Lord is telling us that um, he's the Alpha and that we should listen to him. And um, he has like more of a like position over us. Yeah, I actually agree with that. What do you think about the Jesus pastor? Yes, I just want to say that Alpha and Omega is from the Greek alphabet, which means beginning and then ending. The Alpha is the beginning and then the Omega is the ending. Like we have A, B, C, D, where A is the beginning and then the Z, is the ending so john was trying to emphasize here that we have a god who is ruler of all who is the beginner and who is the god of an end in this world so sometimes when you read the bible you hear that before abraham i was we are serving a god who has a beginning and who has an end and nobody understands that so basically this Bible quotation was emphasizing that we, we are serving a ruler who has a beginning and who has an end that no human being can understand or comprehend. Okay, thank you, Pastor, for your answer. So moving on to the next question for the PowerPoint discussion, it says, it says, I'm um, sorry, what is the important, what, why is it important to know that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end? What do you think about the question, Rihanna? I feel like it's important for us to know that he is the Alpha and the Omega because some people might try to belittle God and be like, oh, I could do this and I could do that, but you can't. Yeah, I totally understand too. I think um, God's saying I'm the Alpha and the Omega is just saying that he's the beginning of the well, he's the one that created the earth and the heaven. What do you think about the question, Pastor Amos? Yeah, it means he's a God of the past, God of the present, and God of the future. So simply put, we serve a God who was and is and will continue to exist forever and ever. So he's an eternal God. That's what I want to say, by implying Alpha and Omega. Thank you for your answer and thank you again. So we're gonna move on to the next question. It says, what do you think about John was accepted on Pedemos? I feel like um, John being exiled on Pedemos was God's plan. Yeah, probably true. I think a lot of the disciples went through a lot of things. I think everything that happened just is God's plan. But since also the, their leader is already dead, so them spreading the gospel or like being a servant of God just put them in a difficult um situation. But also I think um like Rihanna said, it's a decision from God, even though it's a hard decision. What do you think about the question, Pastor? Yes, when you study the scripture, the reason why John was taken to Patmos was simple because he never stopped preaching about Jesus Christ. Even though they were warning him, even though his colleagues has been stoned and then been killed to death, but he never stopped preaching about Jesus Christ. Therefore, they need to take him to Patmos. And you know, when we, we say Patmos is an island which is rocky mountain near uh, Asia Minor and then Ephesus. So basically, John was taken to that place because they didn't want him to continue preaching the gospel or preaching about Jesus Christ. So that was why he was taken to that Rocky Mountain called Patmos. I got this question. Okay, thank you, sir. And sir, Pastor, we're going to move on to the next one. Um, the next question says, what does it mean when Jesus said he is the first and the last? <clears throat> what do you think about the question, Linda? When Jesus says that he's the first and the last, it means that Jesus made the world and put all of us on it as the beginning. Mm -hmm. And he's going to come back and get his people, and that will be the end. Yeah, I totally agree with that, too. I think Jesus saying that he's the first is that he was there before us. And him saying that he's the last is that he's going to be the last person at the end. What do you think about the question, Pastor Amos? 
Uh, yes, it means he is our savior. Yeah. Who, when, before we are born into this world, he existed. Before we were even born, he was there. And when we die, he will still be there because he died and has risen. He died on the cross for you and I to be saved. So that is the meaning of the question in terms of Jesus Christ being our savior. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And thank you for your answer. Moving on to the last question for the Canastan discussion. It says, why is it important to read the prophecies in the book of Revelation and to understand them? What do you think about the question, Rihanna? I feel as though it's important for people to read the prophecies because it explains the, how God created the earth and all the different types of stuff that he's created the earth. And then this is an understanding on why we should worship God and all the stuff that he's done for us since we've been on earth. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that too. I think the prophecies in the Revelation does give us the end times and I think that is going to happen. So reading them and understanding them will give you, I'm going to say an overview of what is going to happen when God is on the way coming. And that is a good thing so you'll be aware that, oh, these things that are happening is actually signs that Jesus is coming. So you should be mindful of the things that you do and the stuff that you say. So it's a good thing to read the prophecies that were um, that are in the Bible, my bad, and to understand them. What do you think about the question, Pastor Amos? Yes, Revelation is a nice book to study <laughs> when it comes to reading the Bible. And it is a book that has a and the future. It is a book that it is the only book that gives hope to believers, hopes to Christians that in all our toils, in all our sufferings, there is going to be hope for us in the future when Christ will come and take us to where he has prepared a place for us. When we read Revelation chapter 21, it tells us that there's a new heaven and a new earth that God is creating for us. So Revelation is a nice book that every believer should know that it is important for you to understand the prophecies found in there. And the prophecies, they reveal a lot about Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is, and then the salvation he has given to the entire world, the privilege and then the grace he has given to you and I as a sinner. So it is important to read the prophecies in Revelation. And basically, it is about our future and the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. And amen for your answer. Moving on to the next one. But before we go to the Carnestone, I wanted to give a shout out or like a thank you to our streaming partners. So Hope TV is going to stream our show on Sundays at 12 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. CB Radio every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and Obra TV every Monday to Friday. Thank you guys for supporting our show and we are so grateful for that. So I'm going to go to the Carnestone and I'm going to ask Serena to give us a summary for the Carnestone lesson. Um, so I did Cornerstone Lesson 9, and it says that the Israelites were so quick to forget what God had done for them, and they slipped mindlessly into sin. And furthermore, um, a self, um, Moses was being a selfish person to stick his neck out for a bunch of people who seem hopeless. Okay, thank you for your answer. I think the story is kind of a familiar story, so I think the discussion will go great. So, yeah, anyways, we're going to go with the questions. The first question says, how do you understand Alkites in Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9? And Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9 says, it is said that when then have make a sanctuary for me. I will draw among them and make a tabernacle and it's all furniture exactly like the part that I've showed you. So I'm gonna say it one more time. It says then have them make a sanctuary for me. I'll come and draw in it and you make it exactly like how I've showed you. So how do you understand the key test, Rihanna? I understand the key text as in God saying that he will he will always make a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that too. I think um, the, how I understand the key test is that 
God Center isn't something that I think anyone can build. He specifically chose, like, I think certain people to build it. So it's just saying that make a century for me and I myself will come and join in there. And to even make that century, he will appoint the people to make it. What do you think about the key test, Pastor Amos? And God is making a way to bring or restore human beings back to the right path. So he gave that order for the sanctuary to be made so that he may dwell and come in our midst. Even though we are sinners, he still needs us. And then he decided to come closer to us using the sanctuary model or the sanctuary method. And that's what we understand and see that blood was shed when they were killing animals so that you and I, our sins, will be forgiven. So it is a place that God saved sinners. So that's what I understand about the key test. All right, amen, and thank you for your answer. Moving on to the next question, it says, what was the ultimate purpose of building the sanctuary? What do you think about the question, Rihanna? I feel the reason why they built the sanctuary is for the people to go and learn about the word of God. Yeah, I totally agree with that too. I think the purpose or one of the purpose were they build the sanctuary is to um, worship God because as humanity or as as Christians, our purpose is to worship God. So they build a sanctuary to give thanks to God for what he has done for them through out them coming from the um, slavery through whatever that they went through to the promised land. What do you think about the question, Pastor Amos? Yes, like my dear sister said, aside worshiping God, it was a place where uh, our sins were forgiven. That is when you sin, that's why when you buy mom and then the, the high priest will enter into the holy a holy place and then plead on your behalf so that God will forgive you your sins. So it was a place where we met Jesus Christ or we, we met God for our sins to be forgiven. So that's also another thing that I would emphasize in terms of the sanctuary. Okay, thank you for your answer. Moving on to the next question. It says, why do you think God instructed individuals to give the building of the sanctuary as their heart prompts them to give. What do you think about the question, Rianda? My understanding of the question is that God had told them to give um give um like sacrifices to the building of the sanctuary because God wanted to help them as in giving them the sanctuary for them to um, worship his word and stuff instead of them having feeling in their hearts and giving it out of their own heart they had to be instructed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that too. I think that um, when they're giving thanks to God or when they're giving anything to God, it's supposed to come out of your heart to like actually be willing to do it. That is why God said that um, the people are supposed to give their things, what do you call it, prompt to giving. So I think when you're giving something to God, you're supposed to give it out of your heart, like be willing to give it to God. Just don't give it to God because you want to give it to God. I think that is actually not given. When you want to give something to somebody or like literally anybody, you have to give it from your heart. That is what I think. What do you think about that question, Pastor? I God wanted to win their hearts. I mean, where your heart is or anything that you put your heart inside, it's like your blood. So you take it serious. So God wanted them to be serious about what he's doing. He doesn't he didn't want them to take it easy, but he wanted to put their heart and follow what he was about to do for them. So that was why he instructed them to do it that way, in order for him to win their hearts. Yeah. Yo, thank you for your answer. Moving on to the next question, it says why do you think God was so specific with the instruction for building the sanctuary? What do you think about the question, Amanda? I think God was specific because he had a way in his mind that he wanted the building to be built, like in his way. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that too. Um, I think earlier we said that 
God said they should build a temple and he would come and live in it. So if he is going to come and live in it, he'll just give the instruction for it to be built. I'm going to like give example. If you go and like give some people money to build a place for you, you will give them the instruction for the for how the building is supposed to be built. Because at the end of the day, you are the one that's going to be in it. So you want the house to look good or like be nice because you're paying for it. So I think God wanted the sanctuary to be good because he's going to be in it with the other followers of God. What do you think about the question, Pastor Amos? Yes, you know, the sanctuary was practiced in heaven before he instructed mm -hmm. them to build it on this earth. So he wanted it to look exactly the one that is in heaven. So I think God was specific because he meant business. He wanted them to follow his guidelines and follow his instructions so that the models that he is putting in place, human beings can understand him perfectly for our salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 And thank you for your answer. Moving on to the last question for the connection discussion. It says, what does this lesson teach? teach us about God's protection and guidance. What do you think about the question, Amanda? For me, this question means like, if you do what God wants you to do and you praise his name and worship him that you're supposed to, I think God will give you um, full protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that too. I think um, everybody on earth, God is protecting them from the little animals like ants to us human beings. Like God is like protecting us all the time it doesn't really matter who you are who your beliefs are and he just like protects us just like how he protected the Israelite when they were going through everything they went through until they got to the promised land so that shows me that God's protection for us human it's strong and it's like over any other protection that we literally encounter so yeah that's what I think about God's protection what do you think about the question Pastor Amos Yes, you know, the Israelites were in exile, they were in Egypt and as slavery, and then he sent Moses to go and rescue them. And then on their way coming, he did a lot of sacrifices and a lot of miracles for them. You know what? At a point in time, God will allow a pillar of cloud, a pillar of cloud. And then at a point in time, he will allow a pillar of light to lead them. So that symbol alone signifies how God loves and protects human beings. So when we put our trust in him, when we put our belief in him, he's ever ready to protect us. That was why he told them to build a sanctuary. And then in the sanctuary, he delivered them in so many things that they were going through. The same thing applies to us today that if we also trust and believe in him, he's ready and ever ready to protect us from anything that we are going through. So he is our protector and then he's our sustainer and he's our God. So there are so many lessons that we can learn from this passage, but that pillar of clouds, and pillar of light serves as God, who is our protector and guidance. He did it to the Israelites and then he continued to do it today and he'll continue to do it for us also. Amen. 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 And thank you for your answer. So that is it for the PowerPoint and you can answer the discussion for today. But before we end today's show, Pastor Amosi might give us a summary from the lesson today, please. Yes, I just want to emphasize that the whole lesson is about Jesus Christ who came and died on the cross for us, who was a who was the lamp. You know, in the sanctuary service, they were killing animals, sacrificing them for people sent to be forgiven. So when Christ came and died, that didn't stop. And then today, you and I, when we believe in him, we are saved. So this sanctuary service or sanctuary worship is something important that every Christian must understand how it works and then must be rest assured that with Christ, we are good to go. So we should believe in him and then we should trust him and we should lay our burden on him. And I think with that, in future, we are going to enjoy eternal life. 
that is what I want to draw our attention to, and that's basically the summary of the whole sanctuary service in this discussion that we have had. So may God bless you and may God guide you and help you understand the sanctuary service and then believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior of the world, and then you'll be good to go. Amen. 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 And thank Amen. you for your summary. Pastor Emma, sorry to ask again, but can you give us a last word of prayer, please? Thank you so much for a wonderful discussion we have had concerning the sanctuary service. Indeed, you are the sustainer of life and you don't want any sinner to perish. That is why you started it with the Israelites by letting them build the sanctuary for you and also you allow Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross for us. All these are ways that you are trying to restore human beings to yourself. So as young as we are, we plead in the blood of Jesus that be in our midst, guide us and protect us from the evil one. Help us to understand your salvation processes that you have put in place for us. And help us to also trust and believe in your ways always. We know that you are always there for us and you continue to be there for us. Be with us and bless us. And wherever we find ourselves, let us exhibit your character to others and tell them more about you, Jesus Christ. And by so doing, we know that our names will be, be written in the book of life. Thank you for an angel prayer and continue to bless us and continue to bless this program, this and many other blessings we ask in a humble way in the sweet name of Jesus Christ, have I prayed to it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, once again for joining us in today's discussion. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Rihanna, for joining us in today's discussion. We really appreciate it too. Thank you, viewers, for also tuning in for today's discussion. Tune in next time where we will continue with the lesson. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>